the corporations own this country. I mean, <laughs> what? The truth. Yes. Look so are you for or against genetically modified food? Well, what, what our foundation is doing is we're working with uh, partners. Big corporations, you are corporations, so I take that to be the okay. Yeah, but yeah, our we corporations work, okay. don't. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little different. I yeah. mean, the corporations we work for are a little different than Monsanto. Okay, you know, we were talking last week about uh, some of the stuff that is subsidized in America agriculturally, and it's all the stuff that goes into making the worst kinds of food. It's not beets and broccoli. It's no, and there should be no subsidy. There should be okay. no subsidies for any. Food. Okay, but uh, you know, after the show, a lot of people said to me that's current. Why don't you talk about genetically modified foods? Okay, you're right. We should talk about genetically modified foods. And again, this is a conspiracy of both parties. Obama said in 2007, we would label genetically modified foods, which, by the way, Europe has this. China labels. China, which puts that lead... That bastion of freedom. And puts lead in baby food, you know, or, or some shit well, like at that. at least you know it's there. Okay, but we can't have that in America. You know why? Because in America, corporations run the show. Even though nine out of ten Americans would like foods to at least be labeled, to right. at least we know they're Franken foods. Uh, they why? Okay, why? they can't. Why? They because it says wait, it wait, would wait. hurt sales. No, no, no. So no. shut up and eat your your fucking mutant chili. No, <laughs> That's if, why. Because if if it is if it's useful to label food so for instance things like fair trade coffee if you go to kroger which is you know if not the biggest one of the very biggest supermarket chains in america they use a system where you can track your produce you can use a qr scan on your smartphone oh things for like god's that. sake who's wait, gonna wait, wait, do wait. that can, oh yeah can no, we no, just put you, it on the label like no. like everybody no, else no, in no, the world what, what i'm saying what i'm saying is is that the market has you know when when consumers want that information it will. It's provided to them. Why? I don't care about it's genetically not modified provided. organisms, no, that's the point. which have we never been shown to hurt anybody. But you have a public role here, which is to warn people. It's not a question just what are you warning want, them of? Of what, whatever it is involved in, in what's in the food. If it's genetically modified, yeah, I'd they, like they to know that. Isn't I'd like to know modified. That. Listen, I, I, well, 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 wait a second. You know, know what? Wait a second. Here are the facts. Know whether it is and what it in is. Europe, in Europe, in Europe, only five percent of the food is genetically modified. Here, it's seventy percent. And what is the right. definition of genetically modified? Well, here's something that didn't used to exist. They didn't used to take a gene out of a bacterium and put mm -hmm. it in corn so that the corn grows its own insecticide. Right. That's right. Now we Which, do that. by the way, is good because then we use less insecticide. I know. It's awesome. Insecticide. It's also delicious. No, wait, wait. Wait, I'm hold on. Saying. Oh, no, no. There's yeah. a, there's okay, a good argument for it. But if I want to make a decision about whether or not to ingest that genetically modified yeah. organism, I don't want it to be kept secret from me. If yeah, you are, if the argument against right. it from the industry, exactly. if the argument against it from the industry is that yeah. I will hysterically, as a consumer, make a decision if I see that label not to buy that corn. Well, the solution to that is not then to to, to make it a secret thing that I'm ingesting it, but rather to convince me that it's safe. And they just to show, and just to show that we are not partisan, you know, the villain in this yeah. is Obama to yeah. me yeah. because he's, he first of all he promised blatantly that he would look into this and do sure. something, and he didn't. He also appointed what is the guy's name, Michael Taylor, used to be a VP at Monsanto, the seat of evil, uh, to be the food czar, the FDA deputy commissioner of foods. And of course, Monsanto's latest Frankenfood got speedy approval because this guy is in charge of it. Mm. Because it's like putting Jerry Sandusky in charge of Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> of course, he's going to approve with speediness. Should anything, if there is not a health risk, if there is not a health <clears throat> risk and there are not health risks but associated there may be with... A health wait, 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 wait. There may be. There are not known health risks that are associated with GMOs. 
why shouldn't the labeling be voluntary? And then if you choose, voluntary. I mean, because... Voluntary? No, oh, yeah, I know. Voluntary I'm, in America? I'm You've got to be nuts. All right, let's trust, let's, nuts. Trust, yeah, let's, let's trust the corporations no. to put people's health above profit, because that's what they no, would do. No, uh, that's not what I'm saying. That's it's what like, corporations normally do. The FDA is on its way to approving so-called Frankenfish. RT's Margaret Howell has more. A genetically modified fish with spare parts is inches away from our food supply chain. The FDA is giving General Electric the go-ahead on an application that's been pending now for two years. Just what is this so-called frankenfish anyway? Well, it's the biotech industry's genetically engineered fish that grows twice that of, a, of the normal rate of a real fish. That means it goes into the consumer market faster and at higher rates. This lab animal is loaded with questions that science just can't answer. The biggest one, how does this affect the health of somebody who eats it? Here's what we do know. The lab test of only six of these fish showed an elevated level of the growth hormone IGH-1, which has been linked to breast, colon, and prostate cancer. With the FDA's approval, this would be the first genetically modified animal allowed in the U.S. for consumption. This is important because this fish, it sets the regulatory precedent for every GMO animal after it. Consumer watchdog groups say not so fast. A concern that GE shares with them, this modified fish could escape into the wild, survive, and actually reproduce there. They say that they, they're only going to create the female salmon for now with three sets of DNA instead of the normal two, rendering the fish infertile in 95% of the cases. The non-sterile fish may still reproduce with real fish in the wild, creating untold amounts of damage in the environment. Without GMO labeling, consumers would not be able to avoid the new fish when it arrives in grocery stores and fish markets. Do we really want to eat something that's genetic integrity is so questionable the company making it is afraid it will reproduce with a real fish? The next time you're at that fancy organic grocery store about to purchase an expensive piece of salmon, you may want to ask yourself, is this fish actually fish? In Washington, Margaret Howell, RT. So do you know what genetically modified foods are? Uh, like tomatoes and, and things they do, like to make them last longer when they ship them and stuff. Right. Bettered or improved mm -hmm. by species, by collecting the, the best of and keep going. But um, I've heard of them. Yeah, I, I don't know how big of a fan I am, but... Right. Yeah, I don't really know if it's good or bad. Did you know that we've been eating these foods for the last 10 years? No, I haven't known that. Um, where, where, do the, where do they normally sell those kind of foods? I, I, I'm kind of taken back by it. I thought it was just grown in soil and <laughs> I didn't know they were modifying my food. I know. It's kind of scary. Well, the simplest way to put it is that scientists had an idea to make crops more resilient to external factors. So let's say you grow tomatoes and at night it gets so cold that by morning half your tomatoes are frozen and now you can't sell them anymore. This is what scientists were able to change their genetic modification. They figured out a way to take DNA from one organism and put it inside a completely different organism to create a desired and specific outcome. For example, let's go back to the tomato scenario. Scientists recognized that Arctic flounder, yes, that's the fish, could withstand extremely cold temperatures. They thought, what if we took the DNA trait that allows the flounder to withstand the cold and put it inside the tomato DNA so that the tomato could withstand the same temperatures? Now you've just narrowed your chances of your tomatoes becoming frozen. This idea that you could now get 100% crop yield was the original guiding principle for genetic modification. I know you've all heard the phrase, you are what you eat, but how could you know what you are if you don't know what you're eating? And if you think you know, you're probably wrong. Now, if you watch this show, then you know that genetically modified foods are more prevalent than ever before. In fact, they're so widespread, they're assumed to be in over 70% of all grocery store products. Currently, all of the following crops are commercially sold as genetically modified right here in the U.S. Soy, cotton, canola, sugar beets, corn, and Hawaiian papaya, and squash. Now, for those of you who don't eat corn or soy or beets and think that you're not eating GMOs, ponder this. Soy and corn account for the base product in almost all processed foods in the U.S. And they come in the form of soy flour, protein, lecithin, corn flour, starch, or high fructose corn syrup. And as bad as all that sounds, what I'm about to tell you it's just downright bizarre. You're also eating wood. 
Yep, you heard me right, wood. And the FDA has set no limitations on how much wood companies can put into your food. It's called cellulose, and it's a virgin wood pulp that's been processed and manufactured to use in multiple products. In food, it's labeled cellulose gum or powdered cellulose. But according to Jay Rettenmeyer, USA, the main company that supplies it, these fibers are not only used to extend the shelf life of processed foods, they're also used for plastics, cleaning products, kitty litter, glue, paints, among many other things. But the company claims that adding cellulose to your food is a good source of fiber for your diet. It can also reduce your fat intake. And although that may be true, it's quite disgusting to think that we're ingesting wood pulp simply because it's 30% cheaper than real food. And just to name a few companies using this wood filler, Pepsi, Kellogg's, Weight Watchers, General Mills, Sara Lee, Kraft, Dole, Nestle, and pretty much all fast food restaurants. Now, if it isn't shocking enough that you're eating wood, you might be a little startled to know that you're not eating real fruit as well. Yep. Products like pancakes, cereal, yogurt with, quote, real fruit leads consumers to believe that they're getting their daily fruit intake. But the Center for Science and the Public Interest has revealed that the majority of these fruit products are just balls of sugar and soybean oil mixed with food coloring and minuscule bits of dried fruit. So whenever you see a label that says made with real fruit, it's pretty safe to assume that you're just eating clumps of sugar. So how do these companies get away with this? Well, they just say that it's flavored either naturally or artificially, and the FDA puts the burden entirely on you. You should know what you're eating, despite the slick and misleading propaganda by these food companies on their labels. All right, so if you're not up by now running for the hills, sit tight while I go over yet another food faux pas, meat. And no, I'm not talking about horse meat. <laughs> I'm talking about how a majority of processed meat in this country is treated with ammonia. Yes, a company called Beef Products Incorporated had a genius idea of how to eradicate the E. coli epidemic. Inject beef with ammonia. You know, the same chemical that's poured all over public restroom floors to kill bacteria. That stuff is more than likely to end up in your hamburger and your kid's school lunch. And sadly, while it claims to kill E. coli, it doesn't. But here's the real kicker. The FDA doesn't require ammonia treatment to be labeled on meat. Instead, it's innocuously called a processing agent on the label. Don't worry, the USDA has validated its safety based on the company's word alone, having conducted any independent tests of their own. What a shock. But say you might not eat red meat. What about chicken? Now, aside from the array of hormones being pumped into chickens, did you know that poultry is also being fed caffeine, the active ingredients in Tylenol and Benadryl, banned antibiotics, and even arsenic? <laughs> this was all revealed when scientists analyzed chicken feathers that carry an imprint similar to a piece of human hair. One study in the Environmental Science and Technology Journal found that chickens are routinely being fed illegal antibiotics that breed superbugs. And they're illegal for a good reason, because antibiotic-resistant infections kill more Americans every year than AIDS, according to the Infectious Diseases Society of America. And when this was exposed, the industry claimed that Benadryl, Tylenol, and Prozac reduce the chicken's anxiety. But then they're also fed caffeine so they can be awake longer, spending more time eating and growing fatter. That makes sense, doesn't it? And last but not least, the journal Science of the Total Environment found that nine out of 10 broiler chickens in the US are fed arsenic. Yes, arsenic, a chemical element as deadly as cyanide. <laughs> Look, by now I hope you've realized that these companies don't care what they're putting in our foods. And if we just mindlessly consume them, we're all just guinea pigs helping corporations get richer as we get sicker.